Howdy, partner. Andrew Glazer here from GlazerTutoring.com, and today I would like to teach you how to balance the following equation. Calcium carbonate plus hydrochloric acid yields calcium chloride plus carbon dioxide plus water. So how do we go about this? Well, simply I'm gonna place into the left of every single molecule I have, I'm gonna place this little line, and this will represent the location of the potential coefficient that I'm gonna place, all right? That just kind of helps me visually set it up. Next step is to then keep in mind the general principles that however many number of atoms of a particular element you have on the left, better balance however many atoms you have of a particular element on the right, okay? And then what I do is I literally just start working with the first element that I see, I generally work from left to right. So in other words, I'm gonna to start to, uh, or I want to work with calcium. Now what I wanna make, uh, make sure of is that calcium only exists in one compound on the left and calcium exists in one compound on the right, which it does, which means I would want to work with this element first, meaning calcium. I wanna balance calcium first. If let's say you by chance started with oxygen, you'd realize that oxygen is in one compound on the left, but it is in two compounds on the right. I don't want to work with that initially. I want to save all that garbage for the end, okay? Don't work with that initially. It's going to be harder. So let's balance calcium. So you have one calcium on the left. You also have one calcium on the right. So that's balanced. All done. Move on. The next element I see is carbon, okay? Carbon. It's only in this compound on the left. Do not confuse that with this C. This is chlorine. And it's only in this one compound on the right. So I want to balance it. So I have one carbon here on the left. I also have one carbon on the right. Ah, so that's balanced. Okay, cool. Let's move on. Oxygen, we already talked about that. Skip it. Don't do it yet. Check all of the ones that are only in one compound on the left and one compound on the right first, and then come back to it, okay? Let's take a look at then the hydrogen. So hydrogen is only exists in this one compound on the left, and it only exists in this one compound on the right. Beautiful, I wanna work with it, okay? So we have one hydrogen on the left, we have two hydrogens on the right. So what I need to do is I need to place a coefficient of two in on the left-hand side. You always place the coefficient in on the lower side. And then remember, you just think multiplicatively. Two times one is a total of two, and that will balance the two on the right-hand side. Remember, you know, this is a molecule, HCl, right? It's hydrochloric acid. In every one hydrochloric acid, there's one hydrogen, one chlorine. Well, if you had two hydrochloric acids, right, two molecules of hydrochloric acid, well, then you'd have two hydrogens in total, yeah? That should make sense, it's that simple. And also, how many chlorines do you now have in total? You have two chlorines, all right? So let's actually balance the chlorine next. So how many chlorine only exists in this compound on the left? It only exists in this compound on the right, so let's work with it, okay? You have a total of two chlorines now on the left-hand side, because remember, in every single hydro, uh, Hydrochloric acid molecule, there's one chlorine, but you have two of them, right? So there'd be a two, uh, total of two chlorines. And look, you also have a total of two chlorines on the right. Remember, it's assumed to be a one. You only have one molecule of calcium chloride there. And in every molecule of calcium chloride, there's two chlorines, all right? So that's balanced. Now, everything's balanced except, right? We got to go back and check, except for oxygen at the moment, right? We got two calciums over here. Uh, excuse me, we balance calcium, we balance carbon, we balance hydrogen, we balance chlorine. The only one to go back and check is oxygen. Let's just see if it works out, okay? So go back to oxygen. How many oxygens do you see on the left-hand side? Well, you have a total of three, okay? And that has to now somehow equal the total amount of oxygen on the right. So we have two coming from the carbon dioxide, and we have only one coming from the water. So that actually works out. Three does balance Three equals three, right? So the oxygens do balance. Then you might say, well, wait a minute. It wouldn't have mattered in this problem if I saved that for the end or not. I agree with you. In this problem, it doesn't matter. It would not have mattered if I balanced the oxygen initially or saved it for the end. But that's not going to happen in every single problem. You want a method to follow, and you always utilize that method every single time, okay? Even if in this example, you didn't need necessarily to save it for the end. Save it for the end, trust me, I got tons, I got tens, hundreds actually of balancing videos out there um, that that actually, it will matter that you save this auction for the end, all right? Mm -hmm. So trust me on it, just save those ones for the end where they show up in more than one compound on one side. Guys, thanks so very much for tuning in. I really do appreciate it. This is now the balance equation. And uh, if it helped you out at all, like, subscribe, maybe even tell some of your classmates. We would love to help more people. All right? We're so gracious and grateful that you're, you know, viewing this video to begin with and just taking the time out of your day to allow us to help you, all right? And we'd love to help you more. Check out our channel. We've got literally thousands. 
videos out there, not only in chemistry, but physics, mathematics as well. We got a whole lot of other stuff coming. All right. We'll see you soon. Take care.